In this lecture, we are going to know about the program development steps. Program development steps. So, we in general come across various problems. So, for those problems, we wanted to make them to be coded as set of instructions, which we call it as a program. And we provide it to the machine in order to solve that particular problem for the required inputs that we are going to give and get us the perfect result. So, I can say the program development steps, I can reconvert them as a problem solving steps. So, in problem solving steps, we are going to have seven phases or seven steps that is, the program problem specifications, outlining the solutions, selecting and representing the algorithm. The algorithm needs to be programmed and we need to remove the errors, test and validate the program, and finally, documentation and maintenance of the entire process. Let us look into each and every of them in, in a precise manner. Problem specifications. Whenever we have a problem to be solved, we need to understand the problem thoroughly. The programmer must know all the requirements that are necessary in order to solve the respective program. What are the inputs necessary and what kind of outputs are required and what are needed for creating a workable solution should be clearly understood by the user or the program. Once knowing the requirements, we need to outline all the specific solutions necessary for the problem to be solved, which we call this phase as an analysis phase. There may be several methods in order to solve a particular problem or a program. We need to choose an error-free and more feasible solution for the problem, that is, which takes less amount of time, less amount of space, and easy to understand and easy to code. So, if necessary, we need to invent any new method for solving the particular program. If necessary, we need to invent a new method for solving the respective problem. Once we are done with all the outlining of the solutions, we need to pick up a good solution from the set of solutions and represent it as an algorithm or else a flowchart. An algorithm helps us to represent a solution to a particular problem in a step-by-step -step process in an ordinary English language integrated with certain programming elements. Even a flowchart would help us in a pictorial representation of the solution for a particular problem. Once we have designed this respective algorithm, which is the basic layout or the design of the entire problem solving, we need to convert this respective algorithm into a respective program. So, the algorithms and flowcharts that we have developed needs to be converted into a program with the help of any of the programming, computer programming languages like C, C++, Java or anything. And the programming language that we choose is a programmer dependent. And we can choose any programming language for coding a program. And this phase is the implementation phase. That is, we are implementing the algorithm that we have designed for the respective problem. Once the program has been done or implemented, coding is over, we come across certain errors. Errors are nothing but the bugs. So, we need to remove the bugs that we encounter in the program. Errors are common while developing a program that causes wrong results. Once a program is developed, we need to correct the errors in the program. The process of detecting and removing the errors is known as debugging. And we come across three types of errors during the program development. The syntax errors, runtime errors and logical errors. Coming to the syntax errors. Syntax means rules. Any, every language that we speak is going to have certain grammatical rules that we need to follow. In the same manner, a programming language is also going to have certain rules, that is the programming rules that we, not, that we need to follow. During the compilation process, that is the translation of the source code designed by the user to a machine understandable code, the compiler comes into picture in order to check whether the syntactical rules of the programming are followed by the programmer or not. If the syntax of the source code is not according to the programming rules, then the syntax errors are shown by the compiler during the compilation of the program. So, any kind of wrong syntaxes of the statements will encounter an error messages prompted to the user by the compiler. So, what kind of error messages we are generally going to encounter? If you check this example, here, I have some is equal to x plus y plus z and I have a parenthesis closed. 
I do not have a parenthesis opened over here. So this caused me error error known as syntactical error. And every statement in C program should end with a semicolon. But if you see the second statement, there is no semicolon over here. So this is going to cause us an error message and certain spell mistakes, right? Actually, there is a function name known as printf, which is P R I N T F, but here I is missing, which is a syntactically incorrect. So these kind of error messages might encounter during the program development. And next we have runtime errors. Runtime errors are detected at the time of program execution called runtime errors. That is, once the code has been syntactically good, that is, the program has been successfully translated and we want the machine to run the respective program, then we encounter the errors of runtime and logical errors. Though syntactically the program is correct due to the, uh, due to the system limitations, these errors are encountered. So, and the error message is, uh, is displayed instead of an output. Generally, for example, if I want to perform division, we are going to use a forward slash, which is going to have two operands, that is, on to the left left operand and the right operand. So, in order to perform the operation 5 by 2 is syntactically correct, and it performs the operation, which is going to give us a result. The same value, sa same operation, if I have a value like 5 by 0, 5 by 0, which is a division, undefined value, okay, that is a, a, an infinity, infinite value. So dividing by zero is a limitation to the machine. So it is an, it is going to give us an error message. Though this op, this is syntactically syntactically correct, having the left operand and right operand, but it is going to provide it is going to display the error messages like dividing by zero. And whenever we are trying to find the square root of a negative number, or else finding the negative numbers logarithmic value, or else mixing of different types of data types also are going to give us certain runtime errors. We shall see all these when we are trying to write programs and see. Next, finally, we have logical errors. Even logical errors are encountered while we run the programs. Syntax and runtime errors are going to display the error messages so we can easily find where exactly the error, error occurred and why the error occurred. Whereas logical errors do not produce any kind of error message, but they give us an incorrect output. And these logical errors occur due to the existence of logically incorrect instructions in a program. For example, in mathematics we perform 5 by 2. 5 by 2 is an operation and we expect a result of 2.5. We know that. But unfortunately the machine is going to provide us only 2 as the value because the reason is we have the left operand is an integer and the right operand is an integer. An integer by integer value is going to provide only the integer part that is from 2.5 the integral part is only 2. 2 is going to be given by the machine. So in order to come across this error, so I have kept 5.0, it becomes real value divided by integer value. A real by integer value is going to give us a real value, so it is going to give us 2.5 as the answer. So these kind of error messages needs to be corrected while we are trying to develop the programs. And we are, once we have successfully removed all the uh, errors or bugs in the program, we need to test and validate the program. After creating, compiling and execution of the program, test the program with multiple inputs. If the program works with all the inputs, then the program is said to be a valid one. And done with the testing and validation process, we need to come across a very important final phase that is documentation and maintenance. Documentation is a process of collecting, organizing and maintaining complete information about the program or the process that we have come across in order to solve the respective problem. That is, what, are, what, is an, what is a problem, what are its requirements, what are the different solutions we have considered and what is the best solution that we have picked, what, uh, what is the time complexity, space complexity that the respective algorithm is going to be taken and what is the programming code that we have designed, what kind of error messages that we have encountered come across and how to overcome them and what are the different types of inputs that we have tested in order to check whether the program is working fine. All this kind of information needs to be documented properly using certain proper doc, uh, proper comments and proper indentation, the discoding style and detailed description about the different methods that we are going to use. And coming to the maintenance. Maintenance, uh, for example, if we consider whenever we open any kind of some of the websites during the late nights, we, we come across a message stating that uh, the website is under maintenance. 
please access after one hour. What exactly, why exactly that message has been popped out? Because the website people are designing or modifying the web data. So they have provided a message that is the modification of the already existed thing. That is once we have developed a particular problem, a particular program, in future there might be a necessary that we need to upgrade the program or the software. The upgradation is nothing but adding new features to the existing program or else removing uh, unnecessary features or unnecessary coding part in the program that is existed. So this comes under maintenance. And during the maintenance part we have to go across with proper comments and good coding style and we see that we give a detailed information about each and every method that we are going to use. These are the various phases that we need to uh, follow in order to develop a program or a software or in order to solve any kind of problem. Hope you understood. Uh, see you in the next lecture.